Hello, hello, hello guys, Nathan here and welcome back to the channel. We are once again back on Hearts of Iron 4 and this time we are with the By Blood Alone DLC. So today, the, the faction we are playing is Switzerland. So Switzerland is one of the three factions in the DLC that gets new mission trees or mission focuses rather. And I thought it'd be interesting to see what if Switzerland wasn't neutral and, well, conquered the world. So, let's go check that out. Switzerland is unique among the nations of Europe. It stands as a multicultural and decentralized nation founded on the principles of mutual respect and support. Its staunchly held neutrality survived the Great War, uh, and after seeing the, its horrors from a distance, it's more convinced than ever it needs to defend itself. As the shadows of war looms closer, this peaceful nation must choose whether to remain neutral and deter any invaders through armed neutrality, to form a reluctant alliance with one of the, its neighbours, or to proactively defeat her enemies before they dare consider interloping. So, yeah, that would be one of the choices we make today. Take a look at the, the ideas that they have. They have the Swiss neutrality, which gives them essentially just stops them from uh, joining factions if they're the AI and, uh, you know, increases the limit of sending volunteers joining faction guaranteeing and all that. So, pretty standard Swiss stuff. Then we have the foreign fascist propaganda, which increases our fascism support by 0 0.04. While there isn't a large fascist movement native to Switzerland, our fascist neighbours are keen on tearing up our confederation from the inside with a fifth column and propaganda operations in every canton. But especially, specifically, uh, but especially, there we go, finally got it, in the German and Italian speaking ones. Yeah, we are surrounded by both Germany and Italy um, and uh, Austria. And then we have, oh god, Redou, Dois, Redou, National, I butchered that so badly. Then we have Henry Gusan is prepare, proposing a different way of defending German Reich instead of trying to defend the borders of our country regardless of the price. We can strategically see the Swiss plateau and retreat to the Alps where we can make it costly for the enemy to occupy. So these are some of the missions focuses we could do. And we have take a stance. Fascism, fascist Germany possess the most distinguished and miserable political system. The German Reich is the mortal enemy of the new German Reich. This is why we must make our stand and defend our democracy by any means. And then we finally have the new uh, Eldgenossenschaft. I apologize for my really bad pronunciation. It follows me from video to video. So here we are in Switzerland, or at least on a map for looking at Switzerland. So the first thing I want to look at is, and the first thing I notice is the weapons and the equipment. Let's have a look. 28%. I mean, I guess that makes sense for a neutral country such as Switzerland. We're going to have to get that up. So one of the unique things about Switzerland is they have a federal council. This is the uni mecha unique mechanic. The Federal Council of Switzerland has stood since 1848 as a stalwart zenith of Swiss democracy. Yeah, so essentially you have three councils which are based on your uh, your uh, laws and government uh, political advisors. And essentially, either one of them can be become the president of the Swiss Confederation. But I believe once they've kind of been voted out uh, and someone else joins after the election, they can't be a be it again so i think that's where you have to balance it because you can't once you someone's become president they can't go back to becoming a political advisor i think anyway we'll get to that later on taking a look at the the mission tree right now it is ginormous not like the biggest i've ever seen but it is still quite big for a country that well is was neutral uh but today i think we're gonna go towards Gotthard Bund. Um, we're going to go down here and maybe do try and go for a preempt, uh, preempt Anschluss, and then we'll liberate Italy, protect France and Germany. And by protect France, we mean protect France against themselves, and we'll demand and try and grow from there. So, so the first focus we got is Swiss guiding principles. The Swiss Confederation stands as the oldest democracy in the continent, but the precipitous pace of change in Europe is putting this at risk. Should we continue the course laid by the, oh god, the Eidgenossenschaft and the constitution of 1848, or will we, a new path reveal itself to us? Oh, we'll see about that. But that does activate the balance of power mechanics, which we'll have a look at in a little while. The Swiss guiding principles. The political situation is solid 
and around the Swiss Confederation is deteriorating quickly. There is a growing movement advocating the full guiding principles to steer the ship in the right direction during the impending storm. Well, the question is, which one? We don't know what our neighbours will do, but we will, must decide now which course of action will allow Switzerland to survive. Alright, so we could do... We must protect our democratic and neutral values, which gives us... the changes the balance of power, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Uh, perhaps we should be more active and uh, protect our democracy, which gives it the balance of power on the opposite side. And finally, neutrality is untenable under these circumstances. So it decreases popularity of democracy. Yes, neutrality is untenable. We must strike first. So now that we've uh, completed that, uh, that focus stream, we have a look. We can take a look at the balance of power. So the balance of power is essentially a tug of war. You get different bonuses based on what direction goes. So if we have, so if we are on the right side, which is the cantons, we get seventy-five percent surrender limit. Minus 30% war support and 100% political advisor cost reduction. Just basically saying, like, uh, we're democratic, we don't want to surrender, and but we're also very neutral. Uh, and on the other side of it is the Federal Council, which is the opposite of the Gantons. They are more likely to surrender, uh, but they get more war support. Uh, support. Uh, but I believe... Of, we we'll, we won't be dem democratic in that instance, uh, but yeah. We, so we do have options here. So we have compromise with cantons, which we do need to change the balance of power for this. But this just increases the balance of power towards the cantons and more political power. Then it's consolidate council power, which is the opposite. I believe it, incre it forces it towards the federal council, and then push for centralization, which is ruins our stability but increases heavily towards the Federal Council. And then we have strength from Military High Command, which increases the balance of power towards the Federal Council, but we get a lot of command power and some decent bit of experience. And then we have Rally Cantonal Defense, which increases the uh, Canton balance of power, but gives us pal uh, command power. And then Council Diplomatic Effort, which will come into effect soon, I believe. Basically, if people dislike you, they're more likely to invade you, essentially, uh, or ignore your neutrality, uh, basically. And the more they like, the more likely they're not going to do it. So I thought I'd quickly show off how the elections work of, for the president of the Swiss Confederation. Every year, the Swiss Confederation or Federal Assembly chooses one of the councillors to be president of the Swiss Confederation, first among equals. He will use his power, limited power to represent the council and break any ties in the council to gently steer the council towards safety or glory. Uh, once the councillor becomes president of the Confederation, they will not be able to sign as a political advisor again, but they will have a powerful decision at their disposal. When a political advisor slot is vacant for too long, you will suffer penalties, so make sure to fill the position quickly. But as I said, they can't be political advisors, but you do different, get different uh, decisions. So if we elect Albert Meyer, we get the Democratic Traditional Campaign, or Tradition Campaign, which increases our, um, our democracy. Uh, while active weekly stability gain is plus two percent, weekly war support gain is redu reduced by minus one percent, and daily democratic support is ten point ten. Uh, and then we have the exact same with Johannes Bormann. Uh I, I think it's all the same because they're all pretty much the, the same. Uh, yeah, they're all democratic political game people. Okay, reaffirming our spiritual defence, our confederation has been committed to the defence of Swiss national values since 1932 in response to the growing threat of authoritarianism, ignoring the fact that we may go for authoritarianism ourselves, but that's okay. Now more than ever, that menace looms large, so we must renew our pledge to defend our way of life physically and spiritually. So this gives us the passive spirit of Helvetia, uh, idea which grants daily political power gain in point 20, uh, lowers our uh, recruitable population, lowers our war support by, I mean, we're already at 6%, I don't think it makes a difference, and then lowers our factory construction speed for military, but increases our civilian factory construction speed, which is very nice because we want to get more civilian factories so we can build more military factories for war. Thought I'd also show that the uh, Swiss, the Swiss have a unique, uh, you know, a unique army mobilization, which is the Swiss citizen militia. This gives me 10% recruitable population, but I can't train regular forces outside of citizen militia, and I can't edit any existing templates. 
uh, until I've basically changed armed neutrality, I think, or just a certain things. Probably, yeah, I honestly check out these citizen militia templates and ew, just too. <laughs> I, it's just two uh, militia pips, but you can't edit them. It's going to have up to 15, but I think certain focuses can affect that. Uh, can we train any right now? I mean, we might as well get them going, I guess. The League of Nations Embargo Resolution. The League of Nations Council decided to impose an all-out embargo on the trade with Italy as a response to the country's unlawful aggression against Ethiopia. The sanctions include any and all resources that can be used for production of war equipment. They are to be imposed immediately and remain in place until the country ceases hostilities against Ethiopia. So we can either do is the right thing to do, which embargoes Italy, which is a new mechanic in this game. Uh, gives us more stability but harms our relations with Italy or we can't risk our, our economy. You know what we're gonna we're gonna do is the right thing to do because we're still trying to be neutral. Although come to think of it, it doesn't look like Ethiopia is uh, long for this world because it looks like Italy is actually defeating them. They just need to take Addis Ababa. So uh F's in chat for Ethiopia. Right so this is the uh, other mechanic for Switzerland. Uh, absolute neutrality. Surrounded by potential invaders, the Swiss Confederation must be careful not to be break to not to break out tenuous neutrality, or we risk losing our island or de of democracy to the rising tides of war. So essentially, if yeah, if um, relations go down to minus eighty five, which we actually are on minus eighty five, can we actually appease them? For 15 days, can we do that before they declare war on them? Because they they might declare war on us if they consider that we breached our new charity. Ooh, maybe we shouldn't have embargoed them. Uh, but France is liking us, and Germany is at my turn. The maelstrom and sanctions that have enveloped current affairs have made gold trade more limited and difficult. But with our neutral stance, we can open the possibility for increased gold trade with other democratic nations, propping up democratic economies or for to keep fascism at bay so it unlocks a decision to open banks to democratic nation now i do want to point out that you do need more than 70 percent support for the federal assembly for this mission which isn't bad however you do need um lower federal assembly support later on so just make sure that you don't drop the Federal Assembly democratic ideology lower than 80, I think it said, or 75 or something, before you do that mission. Open Banks of Democratic Nations gives us the bonus as uh, our Swiss gold trade, which gives us, ooh, nice, prediction efficiency, research speed, construction speed, consumer goods reduction, um, and they're getting more opinion offs, and we also get the Swiss gold market, so lots of buffs for this let's go do that and there we go france will trade their gold for us this means they will store their gold reserves with us allowing them to buy and sell gold freely without having to worry about embargoes cool so we do get the swiss gold trade and swiss gold market which gives us lots of nice bonuses the austrian government has accepted our request for vorlberg's freedom Austria has seen the light and agreed with us that Vorlberg's place is with the Swiss Confederation as its newest canton. This is merely the first step in this, into Switzerland's path for more democratic Europe. This is for democracy. So we do gain Vorlberg and we gain a core which is here. Here we go. Nice. They uh, graciously gave us our land. Pro Helvetia. The spiritual defense of Switzerland requires that Swiss culture remain singular, indivisible, and distinct from our neighbors. This new organization, Pro Helvetia, will preserve and promote our shared Swiss values deeply tied to our democra uh, democracy and ensure our survival against overwhelming. Uh, against overwhelming, okay. I felt a bit weird there. As it gives us the Pro Helvetia, which grants us more political power gain, reduction to our consumer goods by 10%. And gives us more militia, military readiness to activate citizen militia, which I actually haven't checked that. So once you do get the balance of power towards a strong council control, the federal council does take over the Democratic Party or whatever party you have in control, I assume. Maybe it's just the Democrat Party. But we're going to keep on pushing our, our way to getting full council control. That's what we want because then we can continue down to get the Angelus. I did forget to show the Swiss citizen militia, which uh, a, a decision which pops up when you do armed 
uh, armed neutrality. Basically, you get mil a military readiness and you gain it by distributing weapons, doing military training drives, uh, and council suppressant, which can be spent on getting improved templates for your militia, broaden the militia for the um, for the more the cap increase, and focus on war production. I'm going to go for improved divisions or aiming to so that it can get better ci uh, civilian militia, of course. We can finally do preempt Anschluss. So there are rumblings that, that the German Reich is looking to annex Austria in the name of German unity. This is not something that the Swiss Confederation can allow, as it will empower the German Reich to make the same claims about our German-speaking cantons. We must hurry and set the stage for our defense of all Austria, which we will offer them protection. Um... Yeah, we'll offer them protection while also, if they accept, we annex them and we'll gain their cause. So we're going to do that. But hey, Austria will join Switzerland. Towns across the Alps will celebrate the union of our two Alpine nations. We will be able to defend, or better defend ourselves against the great powers that surround us. Finally. So we annex them and gain the cause. Sweet. Neutral Entente. We are not the only neutral nation in the world, and with the risk of war and belligerent powers infringing on our desire to stay out of their conflict, we must deter them further. We must seek the mutual help of all new other neutral nations, so one, one neutral means war on all neutrals. Let's go do that. Alright, so now that we can invite everyone to the Entente, or Neutral Entente, let's do that. Let's just, like, let's just invite everyone. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Oh, hello. Alright, so that's, there's a lot to go through, so it's... Some... I don't know who joined or not, it doesn't tell you. Someone rejected. And everyone else accepted. So what... So two re rejected. Who... Who rejected? Sweden rejected. And I don't know any, who else, but it didn't, it didn't actually say. This is pre... Release, of course, because uh, Pirates did send me a key early, which is one of them. Um, I'm liking this alliance. Even, <laughs> even Bhutan's in it. Okay, I'll take that. Oh, we must protect Liechtenstein. Wedged between three of our cantons, the tiny principality of Liechtenstein must be protected in order to safeguard their people. After all, they couldn't stand a chance against any foreign army, including ours. We can offer our assistance by occupying their territory. They can join our oath and become our newest canton. Yes, we must protect, protect Liechtenstein. Time to demand the French Alps. It is a matter of... It is a matter of time until France crumbles under internal and external pressures. We must take a proactive stance in the defence of the Alps, otherwise a dangerous enemy could take control of our defensible positions. That can serve as a staging ground for an invasion into our territory. So, if they accept, we get the control of it. If they don't accept, we get claims over it. So either way, we're coming for that territory. Well, hey, France has accepted our demands. Well, that's a victory for us. The French government has made the right call and conceded that their Alpine territories rightfully belong to us little typer there says use this will guarantee our safety from aggr from aggressors further we will welcome these new cantons oh my lord that is a lot more territory than expected literally all of savoy even marseille toulon good lord yeah i mean i'll take it now it's time to demand the italian alps we uh, for decades it italy has shamefully acclaimed our italian speaking cantons if they can do that we can certainly demand that their alps join our democratic regime I won't really call us democratic, not that much anymore. But anyway, after all, they belong in the Swiss Confederation as much as Ticino belongs to Ticino belongs to Italy. So same thing. Let's do it. Well, the Italians did reject our Alpine claims, so they will not be given the territory. So we get an ant's war goal on them. That sounds like a good deal. The Alpine Protectorate. Never before have the Alps been united under a single regime until today. With the combined might, we can defend ourselves against any threat and extend that defense beyond the Alps, with our peaks as an impenetrable citadel from where our command will never falter. So, we become the Alpine Confederation and we get democratic unrest, which lowers our stability by quite a bit, but sorts some stuff out, so we're going to do that. Okay, so we get a new flag as the Alpine Protectorate, which is the Alps, and we also get a new guy, Franz Kalanda, Quartermaster General, some, some different buffs. Okay, full disclosure, when I let it play and 
Amsterdam died, or got, uh, rather Netherlands got annexed. Everyone in my alliance that joined the war got annexed too. So I'm going to have to join this war now and pray that my really weird defenses that are not properly set up yet hold. Okay, so Germany is on the warpath and is invading the Lowlands, which of course we do have, I believe, is it just Netherlands? No, or both. No, it's just the Never uh, Netherlands are in our alliance. Now, I am not prepared for the war, or rather, I'm repositioning some troops and just going to pray that I can hold in, in the actual Alps instead of hold trying to hold Savoy and... Well, I mean, well, I'm trying to borrow Austria as well. Okay, so Italy hasn't joined the war, at least not yet. I don't know when they will, so it gives me a little time to reposition some of my troops, which is nice. So after falling back to the Alps, we're mostly holding. Some instances we're not, because we only have one division, which we're going to have to move a couple of divisions in there to defend that. But that's okay. It looks like it's time for Gusan's coup. Jacob Cuba has led our great and peaceful country to war and misery. This is not the Switzerland we know and love. It has been corrupted in the name of self-preservation. There's only one man popular and capable enough to end this war once and for all. And if we return this once neutral nation to its roots, Henri Gusan. Which he is the popular dictator, gives us 10% stability, war support, 50% a division attack and 20% division defense. Quite nice, let's do that. I'm just hoping that the German Reich starts to invade the Soviet Union before we die, because we're slowly losing more ground, which isn't great. We just have to pray that we can hold out. I mean, looking at the, um, the what's we call it, the um, conscription, they aren't extensive, but they do have a million, 700 to a million manpower. And German it, Germany is on extensive as well, about 500 to 800,000. So we'll see. The deaths are quite a bit. I mean, Germany's lost 400,000 uh, to us. Whereas Italy hasn't lost that much to us because they have only been tacking in, in two little, little, little fronts, I guess. Speaking of, you know, everyone else's manpower in the construction service, I just realized we actually have none, which isn't great. And we can't increase our, well, we can't have anything more. So let's just, I hate that we can hold on. Now, I don't know how they did it, but the Soviet Union somehow got four divisions, one being a tank, for the entire German army. Fair enough, Stalin. The spirit of resistance. The hearts and minds of the people are there helping protectorate is the most important front in the battle for our survival. We must ensure our our every Alpine citizen is ready to fight until the end, even when all seem lost. So this gives us Swiss spirit of resistance, which gives us more or less likely to surrender, more stability, which we're fairly okay on, and division training time, which we kind of probably should have done this earlier, but we, yeah, we didn't now. So they're sort of attacking us in the Alps now because they're too busy being really terrible at invading Albania with the Turkish and the Brits. And the RC, it's a very unique situation down in the Balkans. So I've just been leaving this on ticking while I wait for hopefully the Soviet Union or someone to help out because we're kind of in a rut right now. I noticed that we've killed two and a half million Germans and they're still coming. We also killed about 700,000 Italians. So what's their, what they like there? Conscription. They're still not extensive and still have a million, probably because they've gained more territory. So that doesn't help. But, oh. They're on service by requirement. And they have no manpower. That is good for us. Maybe we'll be able to push back Italy very soon. We'll see. We'll let them keep ticking. We need to wait for the Soviet Union's ideally. So I didn't realize that if you go down towards the continuous focus, there is a support at the militias continuous focus which is actually quite nice gives you 30% attack defense speed and organize and 50% organization for your militia it's really nice uh, for when most of your army is militia uh, but yeah the, 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 the front still the same that being said US did join the Allies and now are at war with the Germans so and Italians so maybe we'll be able to get out of this soon 
No war on on the Soviet Union yet, but I hope that it starts. A little saving grace is that the Brits have landed in Genova, you know, so maybe we can get more invasions going and more men in. I mean, hopefully, Italy is the is definitely easier to take on than Germany. Oh, never mind. They've already lost it, and they're gonna get all killed. Uh, that did not go well at all. It's getting on almost 1944, and the Soviet Union hasn't been invaded, uh, which is not great. And every invasion of Italy that the Brits or anyone do, does just gets completely overrun. They've got a, a little bit of a foothold in Romania, but really need the Soviets to join, and I'm not too sure if they will, because Germany hasn't declared war on them. Maybe the Soviet Union will declare war on Germany. Oh, well, uh, never mind. Instead of Soviet Union declaring war on the Germans and the Germans declaring war on the Union, Soviet Union, Romania is throwing a spanner in the works of Hitler and is invading the Soviet Union. Not really what I expected, but hopefully this brings the Soviets in against the, a the Axis. Hopefully. I mean, so far it's only Romania. Oh, there we go. Well, good luck, Romania. Aha, we have pushed anyway, slightly out of the Alps. I mean, I don't think we're going to hold it for too much longer. Oh, don't push. Don't stop pushing. Anyway, let's just hope we can hold out here. We got a cheeky little encirclement over in the Gotthard Pass. Don't know how long I'm going to hold this for, but hopefully we can kill those divisions and slowly start trickling and, and killing those. I don't know why we're about to lose that province. Damn. After years of finally waiting, the Brits have enabled invaded Italy, and we're going to just try and push and hopefully support it, and hopefully take out Italy out of this war, so we can continue to focus on Germany and the Balkans. Well, hello, Benito Mussolini is to pose. In an unprecedented move, Italy's uh, Grand Council of Fascism has seized power to pose Benito Mussolini and put him under house arrest. This action has been motivated by the effort to save this country from the military failures and incompetency of the Duce. Uh, which has caused tension within um, Italy and some fear that this could lead to civil war. Steps are taken to ease situation. Splendid. Oh, Rome was taken, that's why. Great job. I mean, you kind of cut yourself off, but great job, United Kingdom. And there we go. The Repubblica Social Italiana fractures into civil war. The newly appointed leader of the Republic Social Italiana, uh, Benito Mussolini, oh, he's back, has been unable to address the rising tensions that have been divided the Italians recently. This has caused a civil war to erupt. Nice. So the Kingdom of Italy declares war on Italy. Oh, there we go. There's Mr. Mussolini. And I guess this is the... Oh, they joined us. Uh, I don't know why they joined us, but I'm, I'm taking it. I love his stash. Anyway, let's let's go finish off Italy. I mean, they did get a lot of the territory actually, but it should be fine. What's the what's it called out? I mean, they almost capitulated. It's fine. Oh, and they capitulated, and I got all my territory back. Okay, that's great. Now let's keep pushing. They no longer have really any forces on our borders because the Soviets are almost at Berlin. So we're doing a full out. Just push with yeah, yeeting towards everyone's capital to try and kill. Switzerland will arise. Oh, and Berlin has fallen to the Soviets. The Soviet bears growing up. How are they close? Oh, they're not that far from capitulation as well, the Germans, that is. And, well, the Balkans is a mess. I mean, everywhere is a mess, really. We're very close to taking Frankfurt. We just need to keep pushing. Because I think if we take Frankfurt. We will not. Never mind. I was wrong. Do what? What else do we need to take? Where's it? Where's the nuke? Oh, Munich. Okay. Well, we'll take Munich next. And we finally did it. It only took us about eight years to capitulate the Germans. Now it's just the uh, peace conference. And there you have it. A bit bored. I got to these, and I couldn't get the Westphalen province, but Switzerland is huge, and I. I guess it's more than the Alpine Protectorate this time, more like German, Alpine, and everywhere Protectorate. Uh, but I'm going to leave this video here. Uh, I really did enjoy the Swiss, uh, Switzerland focus tree, the new mechanics and how they function with the whole, uh, you know, government positions. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to checking out the other focus trees soon. 
But if you did enjoy the video, then do be sure to drop a like. And let me know what faction you plan on playing first down in the comments section. If you're new here, then do be sure to subscribe. Oh, and that, hopefully I'll see you again next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.